Hey guys, welcome back to the farm vlog. We are working on the FD RX-7. I have Mark and Norman helping me again. We're going to do a lot of things for the car and we have Raleigh also coming this weekend. We're going to do the engine work, finish the wiring hopefully, and mount some things. We have an extra oil cooler, we have an electric AC system. We gotta move the injection uh, coil pack system to the inside of the car. Apparently it's not waterproof, so we're gonna to try to fit it behind the dashboard because Mad Mike has no dashboard and he just has the plate sitting on the back of his, uh, I guess the firewall of the car. Over here on the floor, we have our water pump. This is an electric water pump from Mesery. This has a built-in thermostat already, which is sitting in this housing right here. We have some brake lines, oil lines, some fittings, and then another pump just in case. This doesn't work, but I think this will work. I just need to figure out how to plumb in the system. So this is our water inlet lines and then the hoses for the oil and fuel. We're gonna fig figure that all out. Now we're gonna move this rack system in or this wiring system in so that we can plug this there and move the coils to the inside. We also have brand new moldings. This is from Japan and these are all weather strips for the doors. Some new seals just to get all the seals to look brand new because when we wrapped the car you could tell that all the seals were old even down to this you can see like it's baconing and we want to update it to make it look brand new our main problem is again mad mike has no air conditioner which means he doesn't have this big box over there so he had his plate mounted here because he is right hand drive which means we're gonna have some issues with wiring we're gonna need a grommet later on for the hole that we drilled out so this is the support bar that holds the whole dashboard together and maybe we can mount on that i'm not quite sure maybe behind it we're gonna have to see how the dashboard fits and how it looks or if we need to reorganize this whole plate bulkhead system in between norma needs to figure out how to hang the oil cooler in the front either left or right side and then we're going to try to mount the radiator system also so that we can study how the plumbing is going to go and we're going to have a cross brace here holding onto the front of the block over there so lots of small things to be done but even this mike was saying that the bolt has to go underneath so we're gonna have to modify that and uh, we can't even run the strut brace anymore so if you guys don't remember in our last episode we wired in the pdm system so now we are trying to just put in some more wires. Mark ended up wiring in already most of the switches so we just need to start tapping everything in so that we can prep it and get ready to start. It is day two and they are still working on the RX-7 while they're working on that. I'm going to cut a mat out. This is the WeatherTech Universal Matting System. The Range Rover still doesn't have actual matting. So we're just going to lay it over to protect the carpet. So when I sell this later on, it's going to be nice and fresh. The Universal Matting consists of a mat where you can just literally cut out these squares so that you can customize it. So what happens is we have to cut these sections out so that we can custom fit it into the Range Rover. If you guys want your own universal matting, you can message us at Carporn Racing. And we do carry some stocks, but these are mostly by order. So we're gonna end up trimming this whole lower section here, and then this pedal section here, and maybe the first block over here. I'm gonna test fit everything real quick. may not be the best fitting right now but it's gonna help protect the carpet I should have left the blocks here and I trimmed around the gas pedal so it doesn't get stuck here's the rear nice and snug and then the front side we didn't have to cut anything for the passenger side I didn't have to cut anything it's the whole piece mat and it's just gonna protect the carpet so that the future owner doesn't have dirty carpets afternoon updates so we have the wire here I don't know what that is but we have also the fuel pressure wire, the oil pressure wire, the coil packs. We're going to hard mount that on already. Norman and Mark have been busily working on the system, making brackets. The igniters for the coil packs are located now behind the dashboard, hoping that this has enough ventilation. 
they now made a different uh, mounting system for the PDM and then Mark actually stole the Volkswagen fuse box which we're gonna convert anyway to another wiring system so we're reusing that to basically power on the engine harness We've also located a power bus bar system so the main power goes here and then we can distribute positive power from this bus bar I also asked Marvin from the car shop to order us a 250 amp alternator so that we can figure out how to power the electric air conditioning system along with the electric power steering system later on that we're going to need so we're gonna finish as much as possible to mount the dashboard already and basically we can fire up the body wire harness and the PDM and start testing everything and programming to see if uh, everything works and there's no short in the load they both decided to put the ECU behind the airbag console so when you pop the airbag console up we basically have the ECU that we can plug into. Hey Mike. Good, doing well. So that is the outlet, right? So it comes out of there, goes into the oil cooler, goes into your oil filter, okay. and then goes into that back okay. section. Okay, we just got some instructions. This is the in, that's the out. So water has to go in there, water has to come out there. And then this oil line right here just plugs straight back up in there. And then this one goes out into the oil cooler. The oil cooler goes into the oil filter. The oil filter returns back in there. This is breather. Okay, we gotta remember all that. Let me record it real quick. Day three. I went on a call with Mad Mike this morning and we are trying to fit in the radiator and figure out the plumbing now that we know the inlet and outlet of the system. I am removing the air strut so that we can drop this so that we can invert one of these studs. Day 4 afternoon updates. Mark is continuing to wire the car and he wants me to test the PDM system so we're gonna see if we can fire that up. They actually just mounted the fuel tank already so that Mark can finish wiring the fuel system in and the radium peaks out here. So this is one of the air suspension relays that I used to have from Carporn and we're using that to power all three fuel pumps because we have one lift pump and two main pumps so this is a surge style system where this little cylinder in between the fuel tank is actually the surge tank. Okay. Yeah, nothing's working. Not sure what's happening. Um, some of these switches work, the brake lights work, the windows work, but the CAN bus switch is not working. I had this problem with Vicky when we were wiring Vicky in and I had to change the CAN bus twice. There's about seven choices for the canvas switches on the Race Studio 3 and I need to figure out an email AIM and see what is up. But uh, off the bat, I do think we can start the car up once the mechanical team actually finishes with the mounting of the engine, the oil lines, the fuel lines, and then the ECU we haven't powered up but it should fire up because we got everything else to work. And there you go. Mark, how do you feel? <laughs> so in the meantime, Norman is actually fixing all the moldings already.
the screw. Oh. It's like 9 in the evening, so tired and I uh, haven't been doing any updates because we've been working on two cars. This car, the RX-7 and the M4 back there. And we've ran into some issues and we're not going to be able to finish the car, not here in the farm. we got to bring it down to Manila. We have major issues with the engine being off-center and the headers hitting the chassis and the intake also hitting the strut tower. So, executive decision is to get the car back on the ground, send it down to Manila, redo the exhaust because it's also sticking past underneath the chassis. It's too low and there's no way that we're going to be able to run that. So, gotta do a lot of work and it's not going to finish and this vlog is going to be cut. It's never really bolt on, is it? Yesterday we ended late with the FDRX7 and we're still having a few issues with the car so I decided to send the car down the middle. We are wrapping it up and getting everything electrically working except for the motor of course so that we can put it on a tow truck and then send it down to Raleigh shop so that he can redo the header system. We actually might redo the intake system also. Um, as you can see, this is the center line there. Let me hold it. This is the center line for the car. And if you notice, the engine is actually off to the side a little. It's because the headers and down to the intake is actually bumping some parts of the chassis. Now, Mad Mike said the whole engine is offset. I just don't know how many inches it is offset to the left or to the driver's side. But we also have an issue with the collector and the long tube headers, which I will show you. So the long tube headers behind me is really low and we're gonna end up leaving that somewhere. So instead of having this issue of like getting the car running and then seeing what could be the problem, we're actually just gonna fix it. Basically that has to go into the chassis or at least higher than what it is now. And we actually maybe have to change this also to a bigger exhaust pipe. I'm going to measure everything and see if we need to do that. Uh, we also need a drive shaft. So apparently that drive shaft is not going to work anymore. I need to order a new drive shaft head. We have to order also a new alternator, a high amp alternator to mount our electric AC. We don't have power steering because the power steering lines are hitting the, the oil sump, if, if I'm not wrong. Having issues with the CAN bus system. So we're wiring in the switches to the original stock so that we can get some of the basic functionings working and then uh, wrap everything up. We're gonna seal up the whole interior. I'm not gonna put back the stock seats anymore in the rear and the seat belts because I don't think we need them. Um, we're also not gonna cut the hood just yet. We're gonna send the hood separately so that we can work out what to do with the intake. The intake definitely is, uh, I think, a little too, too high for the streetcar. What do you guys think? Before this gets faded by anything, this is Mad Mike's signature and that's his uh, dedication to me to Angie, let it scream and then used by Mad Mike. I wish I could clear coat that on but that means I have to clear coat the whole thing and if I just clear coat that it's gonna look weird. I just don't know what to do, but yeah, that's not going to last that long. But the memory of having the FD motor from Madball is intense. And uh, we're going to mount our water pump here and then try to figure out the offset. But since this project is going to take a few more months, probably we're going to end the vlog here. Hope you guys enjoyed this content. I'll see you guys again in the next video. Stay tuned for the part three of the FD RX-7 build. Peace out.